Primoz Roglic and his sudden move from Jumbo Visma to Bora Hansgrohe has sent the entire cycling world into a frenzy, instantly making the next season something nobody would like to miss. Jumbo Visma decided to let the rider who helped them rise to the very top slip away, which made everyone question how Bora Hansgrohe ended up being the team who signed Roglic. So how exactly did that happen? And did Red Bull really offer big money for the trade to happen? See, one of the main reasons this trade happened is Bora Hansgrohe owner and manager Ralf Denk, who saw the opportunity and hopped on the train before it even began to form. He admitted that things moved very quickly once he first heard of a possible merger between Jumbo Visma and Sudal Quickstep at the final stages of this year's Vuelta a España. Denk went all in and analysed every interview Primoz had from there on, and he soon began to sense that he's not as happy with the team anymore, especially not after his team's insane takeover idea. He said, I heard from the rumours of the possible merger from Sudal Quickstep and Jumbo Visma in the final week of the Vuelta. I listened very closely as well to the interviews of Primoz. I can sense he is not really happy anymore. And then, only in the matter of a few weeks, things escalated to a point where they resulted into the signature on a two-year deal for Roglic to join the German-based team. The bus was getting seriously crowded at Jumbo Visma, and Roglic later admitted that he was already having thoughts of leaving the Dutch team when they told him he would not be going to the 2023 Tour de France. With the Vuelta a España situation, where Sepp Kuss managed to climb himself the leader's jersey, Roglic's frustrations grew even more. Stage by stage, it was getting more and more obvious that the team decided that Kuss will be the champion, and Roglic felt helpless, hemmed in by team politics. And while that might have been a bad situation for Roglic, it was a great opportunity for someone else. And that someone else is Ralph Denk. It was finally the opening he was looking for, and he decided to make the best of it. He openly stated that it is understandable that Jumbo Visma is looking forward for the leadership with Jonas Vingugard. He's young, and he's a two-time Tour de France champion. He also said that, on the other hand, Primoz was not really happy with how things ran at the Vuelta. Denk had his radar up and could already feel the tension boiling inside the Jumbo Visma bus. And he was right with Jonas Vingugard already set to lead the team on their way for the third straight yellow jersey next season, Roglic knew that his only chance of actually going for the 2024 Tour de France victory would be to leave the team. There was literally no other option. And it was at that moment when Denk came calling and Roglic answered the phone. Denk said, I asked him and he was happy to talk. From the Vuelta, things went quite quick and we were able to achieve it with the final signature of him. And at around that time, some news came out claiming that Red Bull offered big money to get the contract signed. However, that wasn't true. It wasn't Red Bull. It was Bora Hansgrohe who had money in the bank. However, there's still a valid reason many thought Red Bull was involved. See, Roglic was spotted on his way to the Red Bull Performance Centre in Austria in late September, and that's what triggered reports claiming he could be considering joining Bora. The German team is closely connected with Red Bull, since the company backs its development programme and its own performance centre. They also have a history in bringing elite talent into the cycling world, as they were the one who helped transition Anton Pelzer, the ski mountaineering protégé, to elite toad cycling back in 2021. Even Denk confirmed that the money came directly out of their bank, saying, for sure I can confirm that the deal with Primoz is not funded by Red Bull. It's funded by us, not by additional sponsors or current sponsors. However, while he did admit that, he was also the first to admit that Bora Hans Groher isn't a team that operates with budgets as big as super teams like Ineos Grenadiers, Jumbo Visma or UAE Team Emirates, which all run on over $40 million yearly. Regardless, the German manager still had a secret fund full of extra cash kept well guarded, especially for this kind of an opportunity. Denk said that their economic balance had been quite positive in the last years, and they had some money in the bank, and that was the money they used for this deal. What wasn't known before, though, is that Denk actually confirmed he was trying to lure Roglic to his team for almost a decade, and his consistency now finally paid off. Back when Jumbo Visma took Roglic under their wing, Denk also offered him a deal. 
but back in 2016, when his team was called Bora Argon 18, they weren't a first-tier pro team yet. It wasn't until 2017, when Peter Sargon arrived at the scene, that his team took it to the next level. Denk admitted, I can confirm the meeting eight years ago in the beer garden in Salzburg. We placed an offer as well, and yesterday in my office I found this offer again. It's a really nice story. The offer is bigger than it was eight years ago. If you add a zero to the number, it is not enough. Denk also stayed in touch with Roglic over those past eight years, but that's a common thing. Managers and sports directors are chatting to rival riders all the time, just in case one day they might be able to recruit someone to their team, for one reason or another. And it was most likely their already close relation that pushed the deal across the finish line. Denk said that their chances while they were sizing up the deal were quite good. He said, we had a chat already eight years ago, and we kept small talks and meetings in the races these past years. We are in the same philosophy, and we are also not so far away from his home country in Slovenia, and the south of Germany where we have our base is just three hours away. All the small parts generated a bigger picture, and I think this is the reason he took the decision for us. But he knew very well that the deal wasn't done until there was a physical signature on the contract. The biggest problem there was the fact that Roglic was still under contract with Jumbo Visma, and the team had to unravel the contract to open the way for his arrival. However, Jumbo Visma decided not to cause any problems, and they gave him the green light to leave the team, out of pure mutual respect. The biggest irony in all this, though, is that the talks of the merger between Jumbo Visma and Sudal Quickstep, which was one of the main reasons Denk decided to try and snag Roglic, died just a few days after all the papers were signed. So basically, there was a merger in the talks, almost decided actually, and then when Roglic left, they decided not to merge. It's quite funny, but Bora isn't complaining, and neither is Roglic for now. But Bora, of course, wasn't the only team trying to obtain Roglic in that situation. Ineos, Grenadiers, Movistar, Lidl Trek and some other teams were all hovering, desperate to get a tour-calibre rider. That's also why Denk held his breath till the very end, since he knew all those teams were capable of coming out with some huge contracts. Denk stated, To realise when he is truly coming was when the signature was there, and that was the last days. Otherwise, it's not confirmed. I am a businessman, and there is nothing done until the deal is signed. A handshake is not enough anymore in the modern world, and he's very right about that. Now that Roglic is secured, Bora Hansgrohe has gotten an almost equal footing to the two Grand Tour juggernauts going into the 2024 season. The last move as big as this one, where a proven Grand Tour winner moved teams, probably happened all the way back in 2011, when Alberto Contador joined Saxa Bank and left Astana, while at the peak of his powers. The move is also great for the team, because ever since the departure of Peter Sagan at the end of 2021, they haven't really had a Grand Tour contender, and they were stage hunters more than anything else. Jai Hindley's victory at the 2022 Giro was indeed a breakthrough, but Roglic's arrival will propel the team even further. Even Denk is well aware of the situation, since he stated the following. After the departure of Peter Sagan, it's the next milestone for us. He's one of the best riders in the world. Primoz won more or less every race of the season of 2023. We are looking forward and I'm also proud that Primoz takes the decision with us. I think it's a big boost for our whole team, for the riders and staff. In all the meetings I've had with him, he's inspired me on many different things. It's more of an add-on and I am super happy to tell you this news. So, the fairy tale that was hinted at nearly a decade ago, with a drink in a beer garden in Salzburg and a few well-timed phone calls, finally began writing itself and we get to see what the plot twist will look like.